So the common phrase for this time of year is, I'm not ready for this crap. Um, I personally am not ready for this. We are having our first um, fairly accumulative snowfall right now. Our temperatures are going to be um, dropping very rapidly this week to the single digits Fahrenheit. Um, we are cert currently in the cold room and all of the trees are absolutely ready for this. Um, so we moved our trees in last week on, was it Wednesday I moved them? I think I moved them Wednesday when the temperatures were very, very nice still because the last thing I wanted to be doing, because if you've been around here for a hot minute, you know that I do not tolerate cold. Um, yeah, so I moved them in the when they were nice because I was not going to be shuffling in and out when we were at, you know, 22, 24 degrees outside then that next day. Um, it, it wasn't happening. Um, the trees actually moved in quite rapidly. It was quite nice. One of my mentees, mentees, mentor, yes, yes. So we have a mentor mentee program through the Minnesota Bonsai Society where we team up with other individuals to help bring them along and support them as they enter their bonsai journey. Um, and move through it. So one of mine, I have a couple of his trees that I'm wintering. Um, one in the tropical tent and a cute little juniper here in the cold room. Um, he was nice enough to come over and help move trees in. Um, he was very insistent that he wanted to pay me back. I assured him that having a tree in this cold room and a tree in the tropical tent really didn't need any payback because what's one more tree when you start accumulating a lot of trees? And I have the space to do it. Um, so Andre came that day. I think we got all the trees together, moved in in roughly an hour, and it was the nicest, most pleasurable tree moving experience that I had because he had lots of questions then as we were moving through trees about specific tree types, um, work on specific trees, what type of tree is this, what type of tree is that, this one's really cool. Um, so it's always so nice to share your hobby with someone and it can be very difficult when your hobby is bonsai. Um, many times especially for our meetings and our concepts group and our bonsai, you know, fundamental groups that we get together, I still have to drive a couple hours to talk tree with people. This is not a hobby where you can just be like, I don't know if it was like, maybe you were into dance or music or something. Um, the local friends that you can converse with regarding that are a lot more easier to find than if we are talking bonsai. Most of your actual colleagues, coworkers, friend circles aren't going to be much interested. Um, and if they're like, wow, this tree is cool. How'd you do this? It's like, hold on a second and you pull up your podium and you get out your notes and you lose them in about three seconds. So just don't do that. <laughs> but let's take a look at the cold room now. Um, these trees are not in their final position because we do have some defoliation and some tree work to do on some of these and then to move some of our evergreens to the areas where our deciduous trees maybe are just because of space wise. I, I hadn't gotten to doing some defoliation and some cutbacks um, because they had to move in. How lucky are we though that I can sit in my cold room even though I'm freaking cold and actually do this winter work without moving them to a warmer area, which can be detrimental. Um, now, there have been some questions in my box about things like, do you water in your cold room? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to water in my cold room because my cold room is not below freezing. Um, trees outside, starting about now and probably for the, at least the next four to five months, they don't get watered. Um, our freeze cycle is just too frequent. Like even if we have a daytime temp that's going to warm up above freezing, our nighttime temps are still going to be back below freezing. And though a tree that's left outside is not going to get watered. That's it. We're below freezing. So 
done watering outside, hoses disconnected, pipes are not going to freeze. Um, inside, when do I water? How much do I water? I water thoroughly as soon as that tree is thoroughly dry. Um, we don't want to keep our trees in a cold room when they have decreased metabolic activity, um, decreased transpiration. We don't want to keep those roots wet. So we can let them fully dry out versus during a active summer grow season, we may not let them get completely bone dry before we're going into water again. Um, in the cold room, it's perfectly fine and it's a lot better if you allow them to dry and then go in and thoroughly water and then just repeat that process as needed. Um, another question I've had hit my box is, um, are grow lights, are lights in a cold room absolutely necessary? That's a tricky question because it's going to depend on how you are wintering them and how well you know that cold room, cold frame area that you are wintering in. Um, I am I'm frustrated. I'm so frustrated to see people still repeating that the evergreens, junipers, conifers do photosynthesize some yet during the winter because they have leaves. But deciduous material absolutely does not need light because it does not photosynthesize. We know that that is scientifically disproven. I'm not sure why that goes around in the bonsai community because this has been multiple studies, multiple studies peer-reviewed, multiple studies published since about the 1950s that deciduous material, even during the coldest winter, continues to photosynthesize to support its winter hardiness. Um, does it photosynthesize and need as much as, let's say, an evergreen wood? No, probably not. But we do know it's irrefutable. It's not opinion. It's not I don't think or I do think. It's that all trees continue to photosynthesize even our deciduous trees without leaves. Um, our trees that bark up with a thicker bark, they photosynthesize a lot less during winter than our paper bark type trees. Um, so the trees that actually, our deciduous trees that photosynthesize the most during winter are going to be like our beech trees, um, our aspen, aspens, like the quaking aspen. There's been multiple studies on that. And if you go out and look at the bark of those trees in the wild at below zero, um, you'll see that they take on a greenish tint almost through those bark layers that you can visually see. They photosynthesize actually through their branches and their trunks during the winter. Um, that's, the studies first started in the late 1940s, early 1950s in our coldest mountainous regions because foresters and the forestry industry, um, DNR type scientific groups, um, we're wondering how some of these deciduous trees can still survive in these coldest, most harsh, intolerable winters. And that's what they discovered is um, that they do continue to photosize, photosynthesize. Tissue cultures are taken from those trees at various temps during out throughout the entire winter. And they do have active photosynthesizing going on in the branches. Um, what does that mean for us? It means that do the question is always, do you have to have lights in your cold room? The short answer is no, you do not. But this is key. If your temps are consistently staying less than 40 and you can maintain that, I mean, an occasional peak every now and then isn't going to be a huge deal. Um, Lights are going to be less needed if that temperature is consistently maintained in that 32 to let's say 39 degree range consistently. Um, if you have problems keeping your cold frame, your cold room in that range, then not having lights to support that tr those trees actually can cause tree death. Um, what situations may that occur in? Um, if your trees are, your tree, your temperatures are constantly staying above 40, we know at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, trees have measurable metabolic activity that then begins. So the more detriment to the tree is going to be based on how much higher those temps go above 40, increases that rate of that metabolic activity. 
When trees start having measurable metabolic activity, they need to start supporting them through using up their sugar stores. If a tree came into a cold room in a weakened state right now, let's say I have a make I have one maple that came in fairly weak. If that tree, because it's weak, we know it did not accumulate a large sugar storage in the fall and isn't going to even have a lot to push out with probably come spring. If it's having measurable metabolic activity because this cold room is staying too warm and it ends up using up that very little sugar storage that it obtained coming into winter and it's not having lights to continue to photosynthesize or regenerate that or support that metabolic activity, if it's exhausted all of those energy stores and it's in a cold room like we are here for five months probably at a time, that tree could very well be dead come spring because it will very quickly use up the very little energy stores it has. Um, if you bring a tree in and it's very healthy, it's vigorous, it had great energy storage when we went in from fall then into the cold room here, and those temps are staying consistently again at a range that causes meta measurable metabolic activity in the tree, and you don't have lights on it, it's going to be pulling from that sugar storage in those, the vacuoles that it created in the roots in its vascular storage um, to support that metabolic activity. All of those short stored, stored burp, 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 I am not confinated. I can't even speak English. I'm not caffeinated enough for this discussion right now. I This wasn't even where we were going today, but let's just get there. Let's just go there anyways, because it just started flowing. So it came in super healthy, came in super vigorous. We have all this energy that we had really focused on setting our tree up to have in the fall so that we can get this huge, massive, super healthy, robust, vigorous, you know, gross burp push out come spring. And our temps in our cold room or cold frame aren't staying less than 40. We're up in the 50s, low 50s, high 40s, much of our winter, and it's using up all of that stored energy that we were wanting for our spring push, it's probably not going to die. It's going to, but come spring, we aren't going to, we're robbing that tree. Like it's, it's, it's using up everything we focused on for a spring push during the winter just to maintain because it's in a state of active metabolic activity. Um, so yeah, just some things to think about. Do you absolutely need lights? It's going to depend on the consistency of your temps in your cold room. That's the long answer and the short answer. And if you start thinking through some of those processes, then you can answer those questions for yourself. And that is the whole point of this channel is just to give you some information, some critical thinking pathways so you can make these decisions and not have to ask, you know, everybody, of course, ask people, but you know what I mean. You don't, you're not a victim to bad information you may stumble upon. Is that a good way to put it? I don't know. But let's get on and let's look at our trees and let's also do a little bit of tree work. We have to, I want to get my big maple cut back and defoliated and I need to defoliate the Dawn Redwood Forest. Um, yeah, yeah, but let's take a look and see what it looks like in here. All right, so here is the back wall here. I have some extra pots. I still have some downstairs I need to bring up at, on the bottom. Um, but our trees are easily accessed. I can come in. I can eyeball every single one of these trees. Nobody is super crowded. I'm very happy with the space I have this year. That's the maple that we need to work on. You guys know that is probably my least favorite tree in my entire collection. We have this grouping here with the reflective background. I do need to yet get lights up on the top here and I do need to fix that corner the I think the walls in here got so get so chilly then that it was hard for the adhesive that I used to stick so I have a I've tried a hook option in the right corner here where I kind of laminated that piece of reflective mylar sheet and then cut a hole in it and then hooked it on one of those command hooks and that's holding so I have to get in there and do that but again all of we have some accents hanging out. But again, all of the trees 
are easily accessed. The Chinese elms are starting to now finally lose some color and some leaves. But everything is very easily able to be accessed and to be seen and to be visualized. We even got all the willows in. Now, I was thinking actually of letting nature take its course with Emily's collection of 9 million willows, but I did wind up moving them in. As you can see, it's snowing and it's snowed and it's snowy. So we are getting a little light reflection. Here's some more of Emily's willow collection and the Don Redwood Forest. We're gonna start with defoliating this one. So to defoliate this one, we are going to go completely natural because like a larch, these can be kind of a pain in the butt to defoliate. We have our protective air thing down. So after I defoliate it, then I can take this off and it contains all of my leaflet matter. So what do I mean by natural is we are going to, where did it go? So we are going to give the Dawn Redwood Forest a fall storm. So I'm going to mute this on down because you probably don't want to hear it. But we're going to set it to cold, put it on high, and it's off. So the forest has been windstorm defoliated. Anything that doesn't come off easily, we don't force force it off, or at least I don't, with this tree, these tree types, um, because I some of these younger ones it may be deciding to leave on, and we don't want to tear off potential branches until next year after it has hardened off, and we choose what has stayed. Some of these you can tell are not going to stay and we can help those ones off. But that's it for this tree. Let's move on and get that maple done though. All right, so next up the maple, we're just gonna get this one defoliated and then do some cutbacks of these longer shoots. Um, what I can do with a maple is very, very easily just assist these off. They are very ready to go. So if we lightly just guide our hands in an opening, open manner, down the leaf. So we are defoliated and we are just going to come back in now and just do some cutbacks. We're gonna bring everything probably back down into this level because where this tree is going to need its canopy here is to hide the very big stump cut that this tree was developed from. So if we turn it around, if I ever get good with a Dremel, this was going to be the tree that I practice with by hollowing out and making this whole backside maybe look a little bit more natural. Otherwise, really, in my opinion, the only option, and this tree isn't probably ever going to be something that's necessarily a good show quality candidate, um, but it makes it a nice, impressive looking tree on someone's bench, um, is to build a canopy here to disguise this and this lack of taper. I am just... I'm just not a fan of sumo bases like that. So some people are, they really like that. Not me, not me. So let's get in and just do some cut packs on this tree. So is this a job where we need our ironwood pruners? Absolutely freaking not. Is this a job that we're gonna use them? 200% absolutely, because I am so in love with these toys. All right, so I am just bringing these on down, leaving a little spot for some dieback. 
going shorter on the sides. Let's see. Do I want to start? Yeah. And that's it. Actually, let me come in. These ends here are quite short. So my branch selection with this tree was quite easy. I want as many branches as we have because the more branches we have, the more leaves we have to create a canopy and to disguise everything that's going up, going on right up at that cut point. So that tree's it. We could pull a beech and get the beech defoliated. So let's do that now. So this tree is just simply too big to get all the way in frame. So we're going to just put in frame the area that we are going to be working with. Um, now, like an oak tree, these don't really get like a maple where they're easily dropped. And so we just help it along, being very careful not to disturb these, all of these buds that have put out right at those leaf bases. Um, so I am going to work through now defoliating this tree. So we'll go fast. So we are fully defoliated. I'm just taking a look at it now that it is in its winter silhouette. Um, this is a tree that I did work with Andrew Robson late summer, early fall, beginning of September. Um, and we did the structural wiring on the primary branches and some of the secondary branches and set it up then for the grow season. So the coming grow season, we can just skip winter if that's what I would want. I would want to just skip winter, but I, it's really hard to see. Whoa. In a two dimensional video, but I am so excited to see what this tree looks like next year. This is a tree that I am working back, uh, working on chasing back the root ball yet. It was put into this really, really pretty pot to complement that fall foliage. Um, one of the things Andrew had recommended was maybe putting it in a cream pot. Um, I'm still undecided. I see what he means. It when I did test pot with it then after he had mentioned that when it's in its summer color the cream pot really really looked nice and since our fall our show for the bonsai society does occur fairly early we're not in fall color um so yeah something i'll have to think about when i do repot it this year um not necessarily into a new pot we'll have to wait and see if we see a good pot that comes along um but it will be it will have root work done because this is going to be an annual visit the next few seasons um, to chase this really, really, we have a thick, thick root. This piece here kind of comes down and made like a, looks like a snail, a twisty snail shell, but it's all adhered together. So I took off a big chunk of it last year um, using Dale and Sue's big, a big trimming device, but this year I have my ironwood tools so I'll probably be able to do that work myself um and Jay thanks for the tools here is your carnage that was created from them this year or this year this session but you probably noticed I also have my snow pants on because it is chilly it is chilly it is still 39 degrees it's too cold it's too cold for me but um <laughs> As always, I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai. When we revisit again, I think what we need to do is go in and we'll do work on some of the Chinese elms, get those started. Um, hopefully over the next couple days, they'll transition to a more readily to drop their leaf type state. Um, just cause that would be a pain in the butt to have to actually manually defoliate them. But all right, hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai and I will see you back on another day. Stay warm.